All right, so it's uh, show and tell time again. Um, ever since I finished the relay clock, I haven't done much uh, in terms of building uh, projects, but I uh, have had on my list to do what this is, which is a um, high precision GPS disciplined oscillator. And uh, its purpose is to provide a 10 megahertz uh, reference signal, which can go into my radio. And that allows me to precisely tune the receiver which I can use um, to do um, frequency measurement uh, contests. And that's where they put a carrier tone at a frequency, and the objective is to measure it as accurately as possible when you try to get within, you know, fractions of a hertz. Um, and there'll be a series of videos. Actually, this isn't even uh, complete. This is just kind of a, a prototype uh, proof of concept to see that I can do what I, what I think it can do. And so basically, the idea is... Uh, um, I'll show the Bach diagram. Um, basically, the idea is I have an oscillator, which is uh, nominally 10 megahertz, and that's this metal can sitting here. And that is, that is running, and I measure the frequency of that um, based upon the PPS signal, which is, comes from the GPS receiver here. And then, given what the frequency I measure, I can figure out what my error in that frequency is because it's coming because the PPS is coming from atomic clock in the sky. And this oscillator has a control voltage, which I can use to tweak the frequency up and down to get it to come out to 10 megahertz exactly. So the way this works, um, this is the, this is a block diagram of what's going on. Uh, I have uh, the oscillator here and it's running. And it feeds into um, uh, a 24-bit counter. So it allows me to count up to um, 16 million, which is what I need to count to 10 million. And those feed into um, registers, which are latched from the PPS signal coming out of uh, a GPS. And I'll go into more detail about measurement techniques and errors uh, and so forth uh, on other videos, but basically um, there are some flip-flops here which synchronize the PPS with the 10 megahertz clock so I get an accurate sample. I then can read out what that number is with uh, some I squared C IO expanders and uh, the Arduino runs it all and so every time there's a PPS signal the Arduino uh, sees what got got captured, it does some math, it shows it on a uh, LCD screen, and then the Arduino can set a um, D to A converter, which allows me to set the voltage on the oscillator to tweak it up or down. Um, there's some buttons here uh, to move that control word up and down, which changes the frequency of the oscillator ever so slightly. And there's a switch that either allows me to do it manually, which is how it is now, or in the future have it be automatic. Um, the output that I'm interested in is coming from this oscillator, and that comes out 10 megahertz, and it's amplified so it can drive stuff. Additionally, there'll be a, a direct digital synthesis chip, which takes, again, a 10 megahertz and can turn it into you know, frequencies from you know, a few kilohertz up to hundreds of megahertz. And so I can actually make my own frequency generator, which is all set to the accuracy that I can get out of the system here, which is timed by the GPS satellites. And so again, I'll have more detail on subsequent videos on the theory, but I'll show you um, what the hardware is and, and sort of what's going on. Like I said before, um, this is the oscillator. Uh, and... Uh, the signal comes out into uh, an, in, an inverter, which amplifies it and takes the load actually off of that uh, chip. And uh, these two chips over here, these are the counters. And there's 24 bits that go to the three chips down here, which are the registers. And then these are the I.O. expanders. And then these are the I squared C lines coming in that allow me to read all 24 bits. This is the GPS chip, and every time the blue light blinks, that's the PPS signal. That PPS signal is what is used to latch these registers, 
the Arduino sees that and then it knows it can go and read out the value. This is the GPS antenna. Also in the I squared C is a display, which I'll talk about. And then this is the D to A converter, which feeds the control voltage uh, into the oscillator. Um, and the oscillator is oven controlled and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty hot to the touch. And that's because of the stability. So, you know, how good of a, how good of a clock is this? Well, if you just sort of look at the, at the spec sheet, um, according to this, well, the, um, short-term stability is, uh, is a 10 billionth, uh, of a second. So that's how accurately the, the edges come. Um, the thing that I'm probably most interested in is the uh, frequency stability versus the voltage and the temperature. And there, based upon voltage, it's uh, two parts per billion. And based upon the temperature, it's five parts uh, per billion. But since this is um, oven controlled, it's pretty thermally stable. And in the real system, it will be encased in some styrofoam to really keep it the same, the same temperature. Um, so, you know, what does that mean? You know, what, what are my goals? My goal is to be within one part per billion on my counts. And, uh, so if it's a, if it's a, if it's a hundred megahertz clock, which is a hundred nanosecond time, a nanosecond is a, um, billionth of a second. Um, one part per million is 10 Hertz. Uh, and if I, and so as I'm, as I'm running this, you know, I'm, I'm counting how many clocks I get every second. If I slip one clock cycle every second, that is a tenth of a ppm. If I can get it so that I, I slip less than a clock cycle every minute, then I'm about at two parts per billion. And uh, what's two parts per billion? Uh, you know, people will give you some number like, you know, two parts per billion means that if you had a clock that accurately you would lose, you know, one second in 30 years. That, that's actually a bad analogy because um, this clock actually will keep perfect time. So 30 years from now, it'll be exact. Um, um, what I'm doing, it's the accuracy of the measurement of a second is what you're actually concerned about. So an equivalent of one part per billion would be if you measure the distance between here and New York City, you know, 4,000 miles, you know, give or take from California, um, one part per billion would be if I, you know, measure the distance from here to Times Square, I'd be off by a quarter of an inch. So that's how accurate this thing is at, uh, at keeping time. Um, if you, if you extrapolate that out, yeah, that's, you know, one second every 30 years, but I'm always adjusting my time. So I, I and I'll, I'll explain it more in the video, but that's why it's, it's not some absolute accuracy over, over a long time. So on the display here, this is a GPS. Uh, so this, it's the date and the time. This is, uh, universal coordinated time. So it's seven o'clock, um, over in Europe. Uh, the F means that I am fixed to the satellites. Seven is the number of satellites that I see. M is I'm in manual mode. And if I flip the switch, I can put it in automatic mode, which doesn't do anything, but make that an A. There is no automatic mode right now. The 1600 that's incrementing, this is the number of seconds that this has been on. And that's important uh, in knowing if the oscillator has actually come up to temperature. I'm going to put a temperature sensor on there as well. Um, the value here um, is the raw value of the counters. And it's 24 bits, which means it's constantly rolling over. And so if it's 14,000, then it's 7,000. Um, it's rolled over. Um, the 10 million you see here is the frequency that I measure. So it's going between, you know, 10 million and 10 million and one. So this is how many counts it's getting per second. And if it's exact, it's going to be um, 10 million because it's 10 megahertz. The zero or the plus one, that's the error every second that I'm getting. And so generally it's, it's right on, but every three seconds it's, it's up one hertz, which means that actually, you know, I, I can't measure fractions of a hertz, but this means it's basically, you know, 10 million point, you know, three hertz. So then after three seconds, it has rolled over one. The, um, 
The 2048 is the value of the control word into the D to A converter, which is what sets the um, um, control voltage on the oscillator. So it's, it's at the midpoint right now. So it's running a little bit, it's running a little bit fast. That's why it's it's getting that extra clock, you know, every every three seconds. Um, there's some issues if you occasionally if you see it give just a huge number and it glitches. Um, that's because the that's because these counters are ripple counters, and so when I change the first digit, first digit changes the next, and so forth and so forth. If you're if you're flipping over a lot of digits, there's a chance that I come and sample it before the digits have flipped properly. So I need to actually have a different. I need, I need a um, a synchronous counter that's not a a ripple um, counter, which, which, which I may or may not need in actually the final in the final design. So the, of interest, um, since the accuracy, tuning accuracy of the oscillator is plus and minus 0.7 ppm, means that whatever I measure, it's going to be high or low by 7 hertz at most. And, and, and actually on power up, you know, it's, it's off by maybe like 100 hertz, which means I don't need any of these digits. I just need the bottom ones. So in the final product, I'll probably just have one of these. And so that propagation delay time in the ripple counter uh, won't matter. And, and, and you saw it just glitched there. It, it showed 500 for some reason. Um, the control voltage is, I can set with these buttons. This is the hundreds digit, so I can make it, say, ah, there, there's a glitch. Um, I can make the hundreds digit go up and down, the tens digit or the ones digit. And so I know that since I'm high, I might want to bring it down um, to 1900. So it's not, now it's 1948. See there, it's minus one. It's now I'm running slow every single clock cycle. So that was that was too much, and I can I can uh, increment the counter a little bit, and maybe if it's I'm still low. There's a, there's a glitch. Uh, if I make it 1988, let's see what happens. So if it's 1988, it's 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 low a little. It's it's low more often than it. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's low more often, and I can maybe. No, that's it's wrong way. I I can increment this a little bit more, and the goal is to have it be zero for extended periods of time. And I can look, I can look over longer and longer time intervals to see how often it's zero, and use that to do the fine tweaking. So let's see if, if 1995, it's still too often. Uh, so maybe I can just do a big jump and see what happens. See there it's zero for, okay, it's, it's still, it's still low, so I can tweak it up. And this is like a, again, a, a, a test bed for me. And so there'll actually be real software um, tweaking this, but now it's been zero for a long time. So that's probably a good set point. And so I can, so if I, if I, okay, so that, but then it's still, still a little bit low. Uh, but I'm again, now it's glitching because it's, it's the, it's the carry rollover issue. Um, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm still more accurate than I was before when I was doing every, every three seconds. And the goal is to be able to keep it as zero for a hundred seconds. And if I do that, then it's one um, part per billion. So there it was a bunch of clocks. It may have like 20 clocks. So maybe I'm three parts per billion. And if you saw, um, and of course that's the glitch. Um, and if you saw it went plus one, minus one, and plus one, that's because the that the edges were coming right when the sample was happening. And so it became, it came, it came ahead and then it moved, came early, and then it stayed ahead because there's some jitter in the, in the PPS, which again, you can, you can average out. But you see what the stability is now compared to when it was 2048. Okay. There's the glitch again. And, and it glitches both ways, um, which I can filter out or again, when I change um, some of these parts, um, I'll be able to take care of that. Uh, I just want to show the hardware as it stands. This is just a rough prototype. You know, this thing is strongly influenced by temperature. It's influenced by electrical noise. This is not thermally 
stable. There's a, lot, there's a whole bunch of noise issues here. There's no filtering. I want to put the um, oscillator in styrofoam to keep it thermally uh, isolated. I'm going to put this on a breadboard, have it be soldered, not these connections like this. But I'm really happy uh, with the performance. Uh, the benchmark that I'm trying to be better than is this uh, store-bought one, which has an output and it has a you know, GPS antenna input. And just in playing around with this, um, it looks like the best you can do is... Um, is 0.1 um, part per million because I've seen this actually glitch. It only looks at it only looks at a second interval to change its clock. It does not look multiple seconds to do the fine tuning. So I know I can already do better than this. Uh, in subsequent videos and in the projects, I'm going to talk about the theory of sort of how this works, how you can measure things that are so small. I'm going to package this, um, some of the programming stuff, and some of the algorithm things that um, I need to develop to actually do the fine-tuning here. But um, it's been fun learning a lot about, uh, you know, fine time measurement, how GPS works, how these oscillators work, and, you know, writing the code for this. I think it's, um, it's pretty slick. It's been, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Again, just sort of playing around here, it's it's been very very uh, stable. I think if I if I blow on it, um, yes, yeah, I blew on it, and uh, you know it immediately went it went slower because it uh, see now it's running slow because it, it's it cooled off. That's why you need to have it in a more thermally um, stable environment. So hopefully in the future I'll be able to you know flip it to automatic control and it'll learn how to um, adjust itself automatically. But um, look for more videos uh, in the future. You know, again, just you've been working on this for the past, uh, you know, probably two days, three days. Um, look for more videos in the future. And this is going to be, you know, sort of a longer term project. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.